Hi, my name is Ben Blasco and I'm a solution architect with Red Hat based here in Melbourne, Australia. How do you go about ensuring that your fleet of Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems is configured consistently? Do they have the correct networking configuration? What about storage? Is logging set up correctly on all of them? What about the SSH server or maybe the NTP configuration? And do you have to adjust these configurations depending on which version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux you're running on any given host? What if there was an easy and supported way to set all of these configurations on your systems and you could consume it from within Red Hat Satellite? Red Hat Enterprise Linux system roles, which are powered by Ansible, provide an easy way to configure your systems consistently no matter which release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux they happen to be running. Not only are they supported, but you can use them directly from within Red Hat Satellite too. Today I'm going to show you how we do this. In this short demo, we will check out the system roles available to us from within Red Hat Satellite's graphical user interface. We will select one of these roles to apply to a group of hosts. We will check the parameters we want to apply and then run the role against a number of systems. In the end, we'll check the results and ensure that they're consistent with what we expected. Let's get to it. Here we are in the all hosts view of Red Hat Satellite. As you can see on screen, we're managing three Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.9 hosts. Now to be able to configure them consistently, I've associated them all with the same host group and I've given that host group a name. It's called the all rel hosts host group. Let's click on it and check out how we can apply configurations to our systems. Today, of course, we are particularly interested in using Red Hat Enterprise Linux system roles powered by Ansible from within Satellite. So let's click on the Ansible roles tab. As you can see here, we have a large number of Ansible roles available to assign to this host group. And on the right hand side, we can see that I've already actually assigned the time sync role to this group of hosts. Now the time sync role will allow me to set NTP servers and configure a number of other parameters uh, relating to time synchronization. So let's have a look at what specific parameters we're setting on these particular hosts in this host group. On the left hand side, I'm going to the configure menu and selecting Ansible roles. Now again, we see the large number of roles available to us. Uh, roles include configuring the system-wide cryptographic policy, configuring storage on the hosts, uh, perhaps kernel dump parameters, and many, many more. However, since we are focusing on time sync, I'm going to filter using the search box at the top. So what we can see here in the output is that there are three Ansible roles called time sync available to us. Uh, two of them are effectively an alias for the rel system roles time sync role. And as you can see, we, it's already associated with one host group as we saw before. Now what we want to do is we want to take a look at the variables associated with this particular role. So we clicked on the variables button and see this list of variables available to us. Now one thing stands out, this time sync NTP servers role has a flag next to it. And that tells me that I've already gone and overridden the default value for that particular variable ahead of time. So let's click on it and see what we've set it to. As you can see, the override box is checked for this particular parameter. It's an array type parameter and the default values for all hosts using this role, unless set otherwise, will assign these two particular Australian based NTP servers to the time sync configuration. So now with this knowledge, we'll go back to the all hosts view in readiness for applying this time sync system role to all three hosts. Now, before we go and actually apply this system role to the hosts, we should probably check the existing configuration on one of these three nodes. So I'm going to switch windows now to the terminal of one of my hosts and check the existing configuration. This is the terminal of one of the three Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.9 nodes. First, I'm going to check the crony configuration. Let's look at the crony.conf file. So here in crony.conf near the top, we can see that there are four 
NTP servers set. These are the default Red Hat Enterprise Linux NTP servers. And of course, we want to override them with the parameters we've set from within satellite. If we check the status of Crony, we'll see that we are synchronizing towards those four servers as well. The crony c sources command will show us the four NTP servers plus the local host. As you can see here, the DNS names are slightly different. Uh, however, these are the same four servers that we're synchronizing to. So now what we're going to do is switch back to satellite and apply the time sync system role to all three of our hosts. So what I need to do here is click and select the hosts that we want to apply the role to, click the select action box, and all the way down at the bottom, we can see run all Ansible roles. So all Ansible roles that have been assigned to this particular set of hosts that I've selected will be executed. So we click the run Ansible roles button, and this brings us to the job screen where we can see that the job is running. Let's actually check out the progress on node one that we looked at before. So here on screen, we can see the output of the Ansible job execution here. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see that a number of tasks are being executed. Many of them get skipped. But at the bottom in the summary here, we can see that 16 tasks ran and two changes were made. So if we go back, we'll check the overall status of this particular job run. And we can see that 100% of hosts, all three have had the role applied successfully. So now let's go back to our system and check the configuration to see what's changed. Here we are back on the terminal of our host. As you can recall, we had four NTP servers configured. Let's check what that new configuration looks like. Let's clear the screen. Let's have a look at that crony.conf again. Right, now we can see some interesting things. We can see that our configuration is managed by Ansible and that the servers have changed from the four default servers on a RHEL 7.9 system to the two Australian-based NTP servers that we configured in the Ansible role earlier. Now let's check out the status of the crony daemon. And here we can see that there are just two sources listed, which are the two Australian-based NTP servers that we have in our configuration file. So as you can see, we've been able to take advantage of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux system roles, which are powered by Ansible to be able to configure a number of hosts at scale in a consistent manner. That was pretty easy, right? In this short demo, we assigned the time sync role to a group of hosts in satellite. We checked the parameters that we were going to apply as part of that configuration, namely the NTP servers. And then we ran the role with that configuration against our systems. Once it was completed, we then verified that the change took place to ensure that all of the systems had the correct NTP server configuration as per our role. So in summary, this is how you run Red Hat Enterprise Linux system roles directly from Red Hat Satellite in order to ensure that your systems are configured consistently, regardless of which version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux they're running. Thanks for taking the time to watch.